River State has been a key contributor to Nigeria's economy by virtue of its position as a major oil producing state. Consequently, it harbors a very high concentration of operators in the oil and gas industry, who, by the way, are continually accused of polluting the state's maritime environment through their activities, and by so doing, undermining public health and traditional means of livelihood of a large chunk of River State people. Successive governments in the state has been known to engage these international oil companies. But to what extent have these interventions brought relief to the people of Rivers? For a bit of success on this, we are now being joined by Sobomabo Jack Rich, the River State Governorship Candidate of National Rescue Movement. We have invited him to offer his thoughts on not just the aforementioned environmental and ecological challenges facing River State, but also on the very high unemployment rate of young people in the state, security of lives and property, and what he intends to do differently to begin to bring more people-friendly governance to the citizens if and when he becomes governor. Good morning. Good to have you join us, Mr. Jack Rich. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank Rich. you very much for this opportunity. All right. Thank you so much. Good morning, madam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's been more than 12 years that you uh, left the creeks. And now a lot of people are wondering that from the creeks to trying to become the governor of River State, a major, major, you know, oil producing state in Nigeria. What's the, what's the drive? What's the interest? Why the drive to be the governor of River State? when a lot of people thought that, oh, you are probably more of an activist than a politician. Can you let us know why you are interested in taking over from Governor Yesom Wiki in 2023? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, of the truth is um, almost three years now, um, we came out from the creeks, so see how we can rebrand the activism, rebrand the struggle. First, I have something I tagged, um, turning the creek of flames into clusters of industries. You know, River State today, as it is today, the river line areas of River State actually produces the major revenue, the major IGRO of the state. And so um, this section of the state has been marginalized over the years. And even though the struggle wasn't purely for the purpose of River State, it was uh, a natural struggle of recognition. We wanted the you Nigerian know, state to, uh, to, to um, develop our, our region and to see how you know, our youth can be employed. But at this point, we notice that uh, we don't need to stay outside to keep fighting when these other people will keep, you know, you know, looting the economy dry are still on board. So we need to come into the system to be able to change the narrative. And by that way, if, for example, if I become the governor of River State today, I intend to create jobs by industrializing river states to bring in, in introducing what they call mechanized agriculture you know whereby bringing in uh, 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 trawlers for those fishermen and women who have been toiling you know who, who, who have suffered all these years you know as if there is no means of uh, you know assisting them you know um industrializing river states there is, river state has any functional industry Growing up as a child, I used to know there is somewhere we call Transamadi in River State in Portacourt. It's a popular place. You know, you meet all the companies there. You just go there as a youth. You'll be surprised that even in their own West Bank, you find something to live your life. Those years. But today, these things are all history. And these are some of the kind of things we want to do. We want to see how we can reproduce our rivers, reposition river state, build factories, functional factories in such a way that river state could be a home of a particular trade. For example, I said 
I want to um, I, I want to make River State a hub of fishing in Nigeria. It is possible only when I attain this position as a governor. Only when the end, the natural rescue movement gets over to the brick house, we can change those narratives and create the needed jobs for our teaming youths. All right, uh, Mr. Jack Rich, you spoke about rebranding earlier. Let's pick up, let's start from the aspect of the maritime environment, which, as you know, has been a major threat to public health, uh, given the concentration of operators in the oil and gas industry in River State. And as Steve mentioned earlier, this has really been a threat. What, how do you seek to address this issue? Well, the, 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 you know, the suit, especially that has been ravaging our state, happens because of the lack of job, of, you know, employment. The youth at this point have seen this means of, you know, survival as the best option since uh, the government have failed, you know, to provide job uh, or create job for them. Uh, for me, if given my the opportunity to be the governor of river state first i will do is because the people what they are doing though in the you know in the contest it is um uh exhibit it is contrary to the you know the laws of the land but the people you know have seen it as an alternative way of you know survival and so we will bring them together you know bring them together educate them Talk to them if possible. Uh, look at the, the, you know the people to see how we can we can uh, uh, um, we can integrate them, you know, and give them licenses to operate legally. You know, create legally, and then perhaps giving them the licenses of the modular refineries, because by that way it will not be illegal, and then you can now address it in such a way that the people you know there will be no spill across um the waterways again now i noticed that most of this spill occurred because of the uh the, you know because of the security agent who go about you know um maybe arresting them and destroying these properties that uh, uh, you know the product instead of destroying the product we should be able to see how we can annex we can bring these people because they have expertise these people are professionals in this field. For them to have been able to do what NMPC or whatever company is, uh, you know, will do, you know, ordinarily, it means that if you integrate them into, you know, the system and give them the license to operate and tell them, look, this is how to curtail, uh, okay, talk to them to curtail the speed across um, the waterways and then give them sanctions. These people will do it, and then the state and, of course, the federal We'll be getting, yeah, for example, in north, in the north, we hear that uh, the locals they mine the gold and then they give, um, you know, they give back um, a some cent of uh, amount of percentage to the federal to, to the federal government. That should be, you know, replicated here in River State, so that the people will not be seen as criminal, but they will be seen as people who go about their legal duties because even the government will benefit from it. Instead of going to fight them and then destroying these things, in uh, you know, and these things in return, we begin to destroy our farmland. We begin to you know kill the aquatic lives and all that. That is why we need to. We cannot. We cannot stop it. Whether or not we fight them, we cannot stop it. We, we can only bring it. You know, we can only curtail it. So we have to be in synergy with them. Bring them, invite them out, and um, speak to them about it. Tell them you know, the consequences when you're not doing it right, and then give them the licenses in partnership with the federal government and for them to operate so that we all, instead of losing this, recently I just saw over $2 billion has been lost to illegal bunkers. And this is something that can be addressed when you are employing the locals by themselves to operate on these facilities. Well, uh, Mr. Jack Rich, I, I, <laughs> I see that you are trying to make a, a case for uh, many of your people who are probably into, you know, illegal bunkering and, and, and things like that. And you have mentioned it in the past that, you know, it was a case of necessity that you needed to engage in such things at the time that you were agitating, you know, for your rights in the Niger Delta. 
but at this point, especially now that everybody is talking about oil theft, uh, do you still see the need for the kind of modular refineries that you are advocating? And how do you think that that will work in sync with what uh, one of your, um, sh shall I say, former colleagues, Tom Polo, you know, is doing with the federal government in trying to ensure uh, that your, you know, uh, 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 we reduce the incidences of oil theft in the Niger Delta region. This is not just about river states, as you know, it's about the entire region. And uh, how do you think that that will work, given the amount that we are losing currently? Well, you see, um, there is no, there is no smoke without fire. Uh, I chief Ekwon uh, Polo. From Polo is my senior colleague okay. and um, an elder brother. We all are partners of this project. We had several meetings with him. Myself, I have been with him about, you know, in two, three okay, in occasions, he invited me over for us to deliberate and find, um, you know, a way out, you know, or bring it to the barest minimum. We discussed extensively. But you see, like I told you, these things are done from the eye, you know, uh, you know uh, it. this thing is a conspiracy. There is no way you can be able to stop it and stop it from. For example, let me give you what is happening in River State now. I told you earlier, I said, the youth of River State see this means as, um, as the best option or as the alternative means. Me, I, I just subscribe to illegal bunker. I am not into that. I am not. I have not been one before. I am not into that. Because I know that, you know, the money they are making, the life loss is more than, you cannot, you cannot equate it. So I am not subscribing to it. But what I'm saying is that, you know, when you cannot, I, I, I just said, those who make peaceful change impossible, makes violence inevitable. The youth are dears. Most of them are graduates. Most of them, you know, are, you know, are engineers. And they need their jobs across board. If this platform is not created for them, they will provide one for themselves. The Tompolo himself will do what he can. Def definitely, you know, because he's respected. For example, I am respected around the River State and some part of the Bayasa and Delta as well. But he, like I said, is our senior colleague. And then, because of the respect we have for him, we have to partner with him to see how this, can, uh, you know, menace can be curtailed. Now, you cannot be, we cannot go and kill our people because we want them to stop illegal bunkering. Definitely, we cannot even provide, the, the, you know, you know I, I, the needed uh, uh, assistance for them. Like now, the Tompolo you're talking about, he has addressed us, he has discussed with us, we have agreed to fight this cause. But the question is, what about these boys over there, the girls over there, the ladies over there that have been, you know, doing this um, uh, illegal uh, uh, mining or bunkering, like we said? Have they been touched? What, 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 uh, what other uh, 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 alternative have we provided for them, you know, to begin to do now? You cannot go and stop someone who is doing something, uh, you know, and earning money, paying his students' school fees, and just come by yourself and stop him without uh, providing an alternative uh, measure to sustain him. These are some of the areas, you know, and then sustaining some communities, you know, uh, no, 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 it is not right. We have to, if we have to do it together, we have to provide an enabling environment. These people who are the experts in this um, illegal uh, bunker, bring them in, integrate them, speak to them, tell them that, look, we need to, uh, you know, diversify. We need to move away from this. Let's create this other avenue for you. The federal government has so much money. Look at how much they are losing in a month or the you know per annum. If they will just release one for that per annum, for just one year for this youth of Niger Delta, it will go a long way. So they should do something to see how they can you know uh, they can um, in, uh, uh, they can develop the minds of the people and also provide. That needed uh, 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 um, uh, employment and job opportunities for them. 
through this season. All right, Mr. Jack Rich, I'm glad you're touching on, on the youth and the issue of unemployment, because as we all know, this is one of the major issues on the front burner for, for, your, for River State, in spite of being a major oil uh, producing state. Now, if given the opportunity, as you mentioned earlier, you've highlighted a lot of issues, but what will you do differently in specific terms? Do you believe that you have the tools to carry this out? Um, how easy or cumbersome could it possibly be for you to address this issue of unemployment? First, well, first um, and, uh, and unemployment aspect is being addressed already because I told you, once we industrialize our state, uh, first it will create that job needed jobs. You know, but uh, let me remind you something. One, most of the major challenges that has been faced by rivers people is the mismanagement of the 13% derivation fund. Now, let me give you another uh, this thing. The 13% derivation fund, recently I heard overhead the governor speaking about how much he has received from the 13% derivation fund. Now, the question is, what is it about the 13% derivation fund? The 13% derivation fund was actually meant for the uh, oil producing communities to develop their communities. And it is not meant for the state government or any other apparatus. Look at uh, Data State, for instance. Data State can give account of the 13% derivation they have received because they have created what they call the Sampade that is handling everything about the community development. So, you know, um, uh, mismanaging it becomes, becomes very small because they are being washed. They are being, uh, uh, of course, the state government knew how much is coming over there. The people of the state, the electorates, the communities are also aware of how much has been given to, the, uh, you know, to, the, to, to that commission. And that commission are the people that carries out development in those rural areas where the oil uh, 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 is mined or produced from. Now, that does not stop the state government from doing projects in those areas. But first, you use what you get, what you produce, to develop your own land. If you want bridges, look at what happened in River State. The governors came up one day, woke up from sleep, and they said he's they are building bridges or flyovers across the state. And then all these flyovers are centered in just one, one, one at Portacourt and Obiakon. And then this money that he has used to transform or to build this, uh, uh, these bridges are uh, uh, monies that is accrued from the, uh, you know, the oil uh, um, producing communities. And then the question is why? 30% derivation was directed to develop the people. And then nothing has been done. Go across the riverine areas, or go across the oil producing areas. You will never see any tangible, you will never see nothing. There is nothing you can see that this government administration has done that is. I, 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 you know, that is commensurate to what, you know, I, you know the, the, the community is giving out. So these are some of the things. Again, we again, said, Mr. Jack Rich, we want to focus on what you will do. What, what, what is your, yes, we want we to said, what you will do. We are giving this mandate. We are giving this mandate. We are going to see how we will provide jobs. What are the modalities of job provision? Remember I told you, I said that's what I turned uh, a click of flames into clusters of industries. If, for example, you know, uh, 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 um, we can be able to provide, uh, if, let's say we want to provide a 200,000 jobs for the river youth. We have the industries working, we have the agriculture, we have uh, 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 the small, medium and small scale businesses, you know, provide jobs out, we, 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 we will set up a, a, a workable plan that when these industries are functional, immediately a, a youth leaves his school. It, it, such, he can be able to access job with his results. You know, it will not be difficult because when these places are, are operational, job creation is, is in progress. You will not find it because you can go to any of these companies that will be established and you get job. And then we'll partner with the, uh, you know, the uh, multinationals and see how, make sure we investigate them to know what, you know, uh, uh, is the ratio of river suit, you know, that has been integrated or into their uh, organization. These are some of the things we'll do to checkmate, uh, to, to, uh, you know, to provide job opportunities for the youths and residents of River State.
Okay, uh, talking about oil communities, uh, you are aware that the president, uh, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, has just sent the name of uh, one of his SSAs, uh, that of Loretta Onoche, uh, as the uh, head of the, the chair of the NDDC. Uh, I know that you know the operations of the NDDC very well. Uh, in 2020, uh, you chaired the committee that distributed the palliatives, I think about 6.2 billion Naira worth of palliatives. Now, what are your thoughts as to the choice of the president uh, in Loretta Onoche, who a lot of people say that, yes, she might be from Delta State, but she's not really from an oil producing community in Delta. Do you think that uh, the president has made the right choice? And if you also look at the spread of the entire board of the NDDC, uh, do you think that progress is in sight, given what the president has now done, if the Senate approves uh, the list? Well, um, yes, NDDC has been a nightmare in the eyes of every Niger Delta. Because ordinarily that um, commissioner it was established to uh, oversee the development of the state, uh, of the uh, Niger Delta region, rather. About uh, uh, Loretta, what she's called, I'm, I, I'm not too close to her, I don't know her too well. But yes, the news uh, making rounds is that uh, she is not um, um, from, the, um, from the oil producing state. I am not sure of that. But for what I noticed, looking at the other persons in line, uh, you know, uh, that we are nominated, I saw, you know, people that have come to change the narrative because most of them, I know them by name and I know their capacity. I know their involvement over the years. And so um, if, the, uh, 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 if this board is being uh, inaugurated by the Senate, I want to believe that they will do something different different from what Akpabio did, different from what others have done. Because, uh, 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 you know, the Niger Delta region is in their need to, of liberation. Bringing in people who have that passion to liberate the region. Not people who want to just make, you know, uh, you know, you know, make money from it. But people who will first take the region in their hearts, and, you, know, uh, you know, before going to look for whatever profit they need. These persons I know among them, the one from Bayasa State, Sam, uh, I will call him Sa uh, Sammy, uh, the one from Delta State, who, uh, uh, the one from River State, who is also uh, a philanthropy, um, one um, Chukudi Dinkma. These are people, I am not of the APC, but these are people that have an outstanding record, as uh, traceable records that ordinarily they have been doing these things with their people, especially that you could think about. And I want to believe that it's a margin, whatever position he finds himself, but you know, I think he will do something to liberate rivers people and then to liberate the Niger Territory region that development will be on top care. Okay. Um, for you to be able to get done so many things, all the beautiful ideas that you have mentioned, if you become the governor of River State. Uh, it will boil down to having a pathway to success in next year's March election. Um, your party is not very popular, shall we say. It's not among the top four uh, nationally. Maybe it's among the top four, top five in River State. But then um, we know that it is the uh, ruling, as far as Rivers is concerned, ruling PDP party. Uh, that seems to be in the news. APC has its own issues in your state. Uh, we know of the issues that the candidate of the Labour Party had uh, when uh, their presidential candidate, Peter Obi, came. And, uh, you know, he failed to reach out to her, who said, you know, Itubo, who is said to be, to, to be on crutches for a while. My question to you is, do you see a pathway to victory, given the fact that there is formidable opposition uh, from the PDP, if APC is able to resolve their crisis, maybe, of course, with APC too, maybe with Labour Party, with your own party, what are your chances? Oh, um, you see, this time, the people of River State have decided to vote 
for a candidate and not for a party. I tell you this in all honesty because uh, we have been interacting with the people. I am one of the persons who we are the forefront of um, 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 Wicked's um, emergence. And um, we, because of our contribution, because of our level of um, uh, uh, contribution, the state, the youth of the state have resolved to be in line with us. Remember I told you, I said, charity begins at home. My antecedent is speaking. For me, I am not one of those people who came from abroad or one of those people who we are unpicked by a particular government or leadership. I am one of the persons who was, I, you know, I, I, you know, advised to contest by this same, you know, indigent, this same less privileged people, these same people who uh, could not fend for themselves, because over the years I have proven that I am with them. I live in the community and I grew up here. Now, moving forward about my chances or our chances. We have very good chances, and that is why the state government is now afraid. We have good chances because we are known across the state. We have our records. The people of the state can attest to the fact that we are pe we are we are people oriented uh, 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 youth who you know who believes in the people who uh, over the years have been you know touching the lives of the less privileges, impacting the lives of those, uh, you know, uh, uh, in people who they say they are never do well people. And so the state government today, with all their powers with, with them to win election, they are still scared. Why are they scared? They knew that there will be a protest vote, even right in the PDP. They knew that there, is, there will be a protest vote. They knew that people are not happy with their antecedent, with their style of leadership. And so people are vowed to vote them out, to vote them and their crannies. Out, especially those 1999 political uh, 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 politicians who have been recycling themselves, looting you know our economy, looting the state. Now today, as I speak to you, the government is so afraid that they even have resolved to begin to shut down party secretariat. Just two days ago, uh, a letter was uh, uh, posted uh, 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 at my gate, the party gate that we should leave uh, the property, that the place is a residential uh, area. These are some of the fears that the government has. If they are on ground, if they are truly on ground, they have the chance to win, they would have uh, kept quiet and see how they win. But they have been, you know, they have started trying to see how they can, they, can, they have started fomenting problems, intimidating other political parties, so they don't have a voice. But the truth is, recently I was in Gokana, I asked a question, I said, please, we are, is the headquarter of the NSAS. The question, the answer is nobody knows because the NSAS legislation just emanated in the, from the spirit of the people because the people we are tired and that is how reverse people are tired. Reverse people will come out at the end to decide and de definitely reverse people will decide and work with I, Chief Ambassador Samuel Jackish, who has been with them, who has been speaking for them, who has been speaking truth to power criticizing government constructively. Now, moving, let me give you one shocker. One thing we need to do to be able to achieve this is bringing in INEC to do the right thing. INEC from the National have tried their best and they are, we are proud of them. But they should also check river states, especially river states. Recently, uh, I was given a memo uh, by the EU of my local government. So for a meeting, when the day came for the meeting, on Monday was to be the meeting, the meeting was stipulated for 11 o'clock. Only for them to call me by 10, 30, when we all have gone, they said it's a stakeholder meeting. We all have entered the rivers at the Buguma, we are, it's supposed to be the meeting. They now called me at that time to say the meeting is in Putakon. Why they were calling me already, they have been doing, they are having the meeting with the PDP stakeholders, not even with other stakeholders. I have document, I have, you know, correspondence. So these are some of the things that will be shared you know, to put in order. If these things are addressed, I think we will not be afraid and we will not be deterred of the form of intimidation by a ruling government. Because we know that we are on ground 
because we know that we have been the one who promoted them. Over the years, Wicked came to visit me to discuss how to support him because he knew the strength I gather. And that's the same strength will be replicated here because the people are there. We may not have the needed logistics, but the people are ready and they are ready to volunteer themselves to give us that victory. So that our river state will be liberated from the shackles of this evil government. All right, Mr. Jack Rich, in light of all that you have highlighted over the course of this discussion, let's look at the political party that you represent. What, would you, what do you reckon your chances of uh, success at the polls will be next year? How much sensitization work are you doing out there for the public? You're relatively, one could say, you know, quite accurately, not as well known as a party. So how much work are you putting in this? You, you sound like you've got some sound ideas. You, you sound like you're quite passionate about it. But what do you believe your chances at the polls are next year? We have good chances at the polls. But like I told you, the re level of intimidation is our problems. Recently, the state government have brought in another executive order after the order 21. Now they said it is order 22. You know, restraining, you know, political parties from functioning the way it should be. When they were, you know, contesting, everything was, you know, was very, you know, uh, it was easy. There was no challenges as such. So for me, I told you earlier, I said, reverse people are wiser. There is not, this is not about political party now. It's about the candidate. It's about the person. They want who they know. They want whom they can access. They want a be a governor that will be a friend to them, not a governor that will come back to begin to victimize or intimidate or enslave them. You know, I heard you talking about um, I, 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 in your previous discussion with uh, Chike or uh, the, uh, the activist guy. You know, when he was talking about uh, um, the government have deliberately impoverished this, you know, the electorate in such a way that you know, you know, they have they, they have not come with another, uh, you know, uh, another strategy. Of vote buying because if they were on ground, they don't need to buy the votes of the people. Recently, the governor said he's applying, uh, he's in employment, he call it 200,000 persons. The question is, if it were to be employment, it would have been a good thing. But this one is appointment of 200,000 persons. It's a strategy of buying votes. These are some of the things that are our problems. We don't have the, you know, the level of money they have, but we have the face of the people. We are speaking for the people and the people is with us. And right there, even in their cabinet, we are believing and we know that the people, because some of us were able to, you know, appoint most of them in his cabinet, in their cabinet, in their party uh, 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 offices. So what we want is, we believe that we are going to succeed. We believe that the people, we are known by the people of River State. Our party may not be as known as you're saying it, but we, our name, my name is Soboma, about Jack Rich, a very papa is a household name is River State. And so the people of the state are, are ready to support the natural rescue movement to win so that every part of River State will be developed so that uh, new cities will be created in the state and thereby providing that needed opportunity for youths and businesses to strive, to thrive. All right, Mr. Jack Ridge, we want to thank you Thank you so much. I mean, I would have wanted to ask you uh, why why you parted ways with uh, Governor Wiki, but you know, I, I believe that it was clear from what you have explained so far. So, we really want to thank you for joining us on the morning show today. Thank you so much, and uh, we wish you all the very best.